A couple of weeks ago, my kid actually saved my life. My name is Cinnamon Cooney. I've been making videos on YouTube with my husband, John. Hello. We've been doing this for about 10 years, and this is my mental health journey and how my child actually saved my life. So I'm sure you guys have noticed that being on YouTube is hard. Any uh, YouTubers that are on for any amount of time certainly go through stress, and we all know life is hard. The world is in disarray, and I personally have gone through some real losses. John has gone through some real losses in the last couple of years. So we definitely had a lot of stress going on, and we were doing what I think a lot of people would think you would do. We were muddling through one step in front of the other. But I was having a harder time, and my child, who had had their own mental health journey uh, through therapy, recognized some symptoms in me and took the very brave step of asking me to call for help, which was kind of a wild day. And I have to say that I have, as you know on the show, talked a lot about mental health and self-care. I certainly talk about it at home. So my kid was able to remind me of those things when I was having a really hard time. So I did. I called. And um, it was a scary thing to do. I didn't know what to expect, but it also was the best thing I've ever done. Um, I had uh, an outpatient hospital uh, was my first place that I went. And in that, going to group and talking to doctors, um, I uh, kind of ended up discovering that a couple of things were afoot. First, that I had a lot of trauma um, in my youth that I'm not quite ready to unpack yet. And also that I was in something called a manic state or uh, I was in a state of mania. Now I didn't know what that meant at the time, but when my doctors realized that was true, they asked me to go to a full care in-person hospital, which I did do. And I'm so glad because it turns out that there was a perfect storm going on. Um, you guys didn't know about this. Uh, I think because huh, you're such a good support system. And by that point, I wasn't leaning on support systems. And I am sorry for that. Because I know you guys would never, ever let me hurt myself or be as sad as I was. But I was very sad and very sick. I'm better now. I'm, I'm crying because I have compassion for how hard that was for me. And my husband and my kids. So I went to the hospital and we learned that I was, I have hypothyroidism. I've had that since I was 19, but it turned out something had clicked in my body and I was in hyperthyroid. This and a couple years of intense stress, grief, and loss combined with the intense work schedule of YouTube had put me in a manic state and I didn't know it. My child had recognized the symptoms and knew not specifically how dangerous it was, but that I needed care. And I'm so glad that they did. And I'm so glad that I called. By the time I got to the hospital, I was having trouble reading words. It's just scary even to talk about. I couldn't remember how to draw. I couldn't remember my child's lullaby. Mania is a state that can be related to mood instability. Um, if you have a diagnosis for any type of mood instability, you're probably aware that mania is a state you can't be in. But mania wasn't something I had ever experienced. In fact, when I was trying to talk to my husband about what was going on with me, I kept trying to refer to it as a nervous breakdown. 
But this state is your brain being ever vigilant, ever awake, ever going, and it's constantly exhausting itself out. And it was shutting down portions of my cognition. So you can see that's quite serious. And at the time, I kept playing that health issue off. You know, I was having difficulty reading, but I called it an eye issue. And I was having difficulty remembering things, but I thought it was getting older. And I kept making excuses for the symptoms that were happening to me. I also was hiding from my family. And my friends. <laughs> um, how sick I was and how depressed I was and how dangerous that depression had gotten. Now, the hospital, they did really right by me and I'm stabilized. And as I understand it, in four months with good sleep and self-care, which I'm going to tell you about, I'm going to tell you how to protect your brain from this. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be all the way better and I'm already starting. I can sing my lullaby again. I can read and, um, I'm going to be drawing and painting, but you can imagine that was pretty scary. Also, it was scary to have to go to a, a psychiatric hospital. Uh, even the outpatient was scary. So I did a week in outpatient and then a week in the hospital and I'm now doing well enough to be back in outpatient and I'll be there for the next couple of weeks while we make sure that I am healing and getting better in the way that I need to. And so that's important for you to know is that I'm okay now. And as for my deep depression, I'm in therapy for that. But also, honestly, the medication made a huge difference in that experience for me. As you guys know, John went through his own experience there and he reached out to you. This kind of thing is stressful for an entire family. And I feel that by sharing this today, I might help some of you seek mental help when you need it. Talking to your doctor, if you're having symptoms that I'm talking about, or if you're at all concerned, um, if you're feeling low, I'm just hoping to help others know how okay it is to get help. That's something that you had just mentioned, and I think it's it's good to sort of circle back around on that, is that you said that you were really scared about taking these journeys. Yeah. And were they as scary once you got into them? No, not at all. In fact, um, this is going to sound very unusual, but I have some incredibly fond memories from the psychiatric hospital. I met some of the most lovely people. Uh, all going through difficult times in their lives. But I, I really was extraordinary. The, the staff and the patients and the nurses and the care teams were compassionate. They were kind. I've learned a lot about how to take care of my mental health um, from that, like more than I ever could imagine. We call it mental health timeout camp. <laughs> is what I was calling it at the time, but really it's very healing. And and while it can seem scary, the people worked really hard to make sure that it wasn't. So how I'm doing right now is actually pretty good. I know I, know I might tear up a couple of times during this video, but that's because I'm learning to have a lot more compassion for myself. But right now... Um, I'm in a uh, in-person but outpatient, which kind of means I get to stay at home. But I do see doctors and therapists to make sure that everything is okay, er, like five days a week, which is actually really nice. Um, <laughs> considering the things my brain was doing, I'm actually quite assured. I am told and assured repeatedly that I'm responding incredibly well to medication, incredibly well to therapy, and... I am well on the road to healing, and I expect to be fully back to myself in a matter of months. Um, I'm going to be recording for a little while, uh, just because I need, I think, that extra security of being able to uh, process for some more time, because this was a lot to process. But really, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. I'm 
excited about the lessons that I've learned. I have some new things to share with you because of it. So overall, I would say I'm great. How are you doing, John? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's. Um, I think I'm doing okay. I think there's a, there's there's a lot, you know, to to do on this. Well, and, uh, when somebody goes through something like this, it impacts the whole family. Um, I've noticed that. My family's been very impacted by it. They're worried about me, worried that I'm fragile. It it has ripple effects leaning out. But the other good thing is it's had some ripple effects about uh, all of us making good mental health changes, like around sleep and uh, work-life balance <laughs> and rest and just uh, lots and lots of compassion for each other. But, you know, it is something. And I'm very lucky that I had a support system that I had somebody who could tell me hey i think you need to go in somebody who could literally dial the number for me and hand me the phone that's what my child did so you might not have that and i want you to know i have something i'm going to talk to you about later on in the video to help you with that because i think everybody deserves a support system and one of the things that i learned in the hospital when we were talking about our support systems is that i had an extraordinarily rare and beautiful support system my family, my friends, and my community. Now, it's true, like I mentioned, I was hiding how I was doing from all of you, and that is no longer going to go on. I think that uh, YouTube had gotten so competitive, and I also felt that there were, you know, I think I felt judgment from certain places. So I got secretive. But secrets are not healthy. <laughs> They're not good for us. And so that's why I'm telling you the truth right now. Why I talk to my family truthfully. And why I talk to my doctors truthfully. So, you know, I think overall, it's maybe the best I've been in a long time. And I think you're going to see a lot, you know. Um, at least it got me. The nice fun side effect of mania is a very impulsive haircut. <laughs> so I got my mohawk back. Um, you may have noticed me do this before, so I'm, that's why I'm kind of also in therapy, kind of like saying, is this something that is a, something I've dealt with my whole life, or was this just a perfect storm of events? And that's the other reason I'm spending this extra time and this extra focus just focusing on myself and my well-being. And I'm doing that for my husband and for my kids, and I'm doing that for you, but I'm also really doing that for myself. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the hospital. So some things I just wanted to share about um, going to a mental health hospital or psychiatric care hospital is that um, ER waits do tend to be long. And it's important if you have support to have some comfort with you. Um, it can take a minute to get in. And I also understand um, not all hospitals are um, of the same level. So this is just my experience, but I'm hoping some of it is uh, relatable um, for you if you have to go. I don't want you to hesitate to go. Um, here's some other things I didn't know. You don't have to be on your last breath. You don't have to be on your last leg. You can actually just be having a hard time and struggling to get this help. And I think that's something I didn't understand um, and why I might have missed my window if I had been left to my own devices. Um, and so I want to say to you, if you're really, really struggling with depression or even anger, because anger is just anxiety and depression expressed a different way. It's, it's the same. It is super okay to ask for help and you will be treated kindly. And I think that's the other thing I didn't understand. Now, there were some weird experiences that I did not love as an adult. <laughs> um, you know, like having my bathroom locked uh, and having to get help. Like, I didn't love that, but it actually wasn't that bad. Um, the grippy socks were maybe not my favorite, <laughs> but they're not that bad. Um, mostly what I found was it gave me a place to rest. And what the hospital really does is stabilize you. You know, as I described, I was really in quite a dangerous medical state. And 
the first bit of what the hospital was trying to do was to find what medications I could take, what medications would give me a dangerous interaction. They discovered my uh, hyperthyroidism, which I never would have known about. And they constantly are checking your vitals and your blood and your response to the medication. It isn't a place where you go get cured per se as much as helped in finding your footing so that you can do the long-term work that is generally involved in getting better, whether that's, you know, stroke recovery, uh, addiction recovery, many of the reasons that you would be in the hospital, there's a longer care path after. So it's, it's not a forever thing. And they're not invested in like holding you against your will. That was another thing I was weirdly worried about. And the other thing I was worried about was the other patients. That was a really scary idea to me. And, um, but much like my outpatient therapy, just the nicest bunch of people going through a really hard time. And if any of them are watching this right now and wondering, do you think about me after the hospital? Yes, I do. Of course. I want everyone to be okay. Um, I'm not going to give names or tell specific stories because everybody has privacy and that's their journey. I'm choosing to live this out loud because um, I had this unusual uh, para-social, serapocial relationship with you guys. Just a fancy way of saying, even though it's online, we're all in each other's lives very intimately. And so that's why I'm sharing this with you. So the patients were actually pretty wonderful. I, 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 I did have a very good hospital, and I recognize that that's not universal, but I have to say that I'm really grateful to the people I went through that journey with because they were as much a help, and a help to me as the doctors were. Um, and John was able to visit, you know, and the kids weren't. And that might be something that you run into in an adult facility. The other thing I want to tell you that I didn't know about is John had a very hard time while I was away. And I learned later that there are resources often in many cities or in many insurances to give aid to the spouse or the person who is left being the sole caregiver for the kids and the family. We could have had somebody come help John during that time. I just didn't know it. So when it's not an emergency, it's a good idea to check your insurance policy and your local patient advocacy to see if that's something that you could have. So if you are a family where having one primary adult taken out could really throw your whole week, that's a really good resource. It includes driving, it includes child care. It's amazing what it can include. So that's something to think about and understanding that. Um, I think the other thing I learned is that social workers are my friend. <laughs> I don't think that was how I felt before, but they really helped me learn about these resources that I didn't know about. So what this means for the channel is... Um, and really everything I'm doing is for a little while things will be recorded. Um, to my patrons, I'm really sorry I have not uh, been able to keep up on my patron rewards. Um, I, I don't really know what to do about that yet, but I'm thinking on it and I will figure it out because I'm nothing if not creative. I have, I'm full of ideas, literally too full, brimming full, too many ideas. <laughs> So I definitely will be working that out. But we're going to be doing some mental health um, artwork. We're going to be doing some pieces. I'm talking to John about like the kind of new videos I want to introduce where we really focus on how we're doing inside our hearts and minds, not just inside of our bodies. And I think you guys are going to like that new segment. It's also something to help me continuing on and staying mindful in the path. So I'm going to, I'm going to do content. We're still planning on doing acrylic April this year. We just may do it a little differently than we've done it previous years. Um, we're going to keep making videos. I just might record them for a little while until I know I am solid enough mentally to be live. Um, uh, one of the fun things about mania is impulsivity. <laughs> so not a great combination if you're in a live stream. Kind of also a weird combination of the hairdresser. So I'm just saying that uh, we're just going to record for a little while. But you're going to see content coming out. And I'm still going to be me. Everything is still going to be us. I'm just going to be me doing better than I've been doing for a little while. 
And I think that'll be good for you and good for me. So I didn't want to make this video without talking to you guys about the idea of a safety plan and about getting help if you need it. So a safety plan is something that they have you make um, at the hospital or in group to be ready for if you have a day when you're not well and you can't think clearly and you have to make decisions. Now, I have a safety plan um, that you can find in the description that's for the national hotlines. And if you just need something, it'll get you started um, and they'll be able to help you find it. But I also am going to have a fill-in that will be linked down below so that you can learn how to make a local one. And I highly suggest having both the national numbers that I'm including in plan, but also a local plan because sometimes there's amazing resources locally. Where I live, there's incredible resources locally for me in the mental health space. And I wouldn't have known about it except that I had a very good social worker, but I could have found those things if I had planned ahead of time. And who needs a safety plan? Well, everyone, because we're all just one event away from needing help. That's what I learned. It's, it's an interesting thing. It's never the problem. It's our relationship to the problem, right? And we're all just one tragedy or crisis or blow away from really needing help from others. And Having that plan ahead of time for yourself and for your family members means that during a difficult time when you have to make best decisions, you can do that knowing that the decisions that you're making are ones that you made while you were the most clear headed. So they'll be the one that we made for you and one that you can follow to create your own local safety plan. And I want to talk to you guys too about um, crisis and self-harm um it is okay to call the hotline before you do something right when you're having a hard time when you're just ideating which means to think about you know it's all right to call no one's going to be like you should have never called this helpline <laughs> you're not sad enough you're not upset enough that's not what they say if you're just too upset to make those good decisions in your life, you call that line and I've got that line there. Now, um, if you're a veteran, I have another line for you because as all vets know, um, sometimes your mental health needs are very specific to the type of trauma that you've experienced. And uh, I certainly understand that. I also have included the Trevor Project. Um, if you're a member of the LGBTQ community or you have a member of your family who is, <sighs> it's very important that if you see them struggling, that you get them the support that they need or yourself the support that you need sooner than later. I also want to talk about sobriety. Sobriety is a mental health issue. right? Gambling and sobriety, those are mental health issues. I've got the hotlines. Uh, in the safety plan, but I just want you to practice some radical self-compassion there and understand that this is just a mental health issue. You don't need to feel shame. <sighs> you don't need to feel shame. You, But you do need help, and it's okay to get it, and you deserve it. Okay, and great people struggle with that. Great people, amazing people. And so I just want you to know that you're worth it, and you deserve your sobriety and you deserve everything that comes with that. And I know it's hard. And we're going to even talk about sobriety here. And we're going to have projects for sober living. I think that you guys are going to really, really love. And then finally, um, for those of you experiencing violence in the home, um, I have that hotline. And I want you to know that that too is a mental health issue. And you deserve absolutely to serve to feel safe in your own home everybody does everybody does and then a uh, last little thing on anger so a lot of people feel shame around anger if they express anger if they show anger it's not just men it's women too but it's especially prevalent in men and it's important that if you are a person who has been struggling with anger and rage and you feel shame around that, I want you to put that shame down 
And again, pick up the bucket of radical self-compassion. Pour it all over yourself and remember that anger is anxiety. It is depression. It's just an expression of those things. And you can get help and people will be kind to you. You can come and say, I'm really, really, really angry. And instead of having everyone be like, don't be angry. It's so bad for being angry. You can get some help. So those are the things that I wanted to say to you about that. All of that is going to be in the description down below. Please know that it is okay to get help when you need help. And now there's a national hotline, 988. Call it. It's totally worth it. You know, you've got your locals, but you've got your national, and the national can help you get tapped into your local community if you are struggling there, okay? So I just want you to be aware of that, and when we come back, we're going to talk about what you can do to keep your mental health at its optimal. So we're going to be talking about this a lot in 2024, but first thing I'm going to talk to you about is sleep. Uh, The number one thing that every single medical professional that has worked with me has talked about is sleep. Uh, We need eight hours. If they call it sleep hygiene, which I think is the strangest thing to name it, (laughs) John and I were laughing about it. But what it basically means is that you put a plan in place so that you are prioritizing sleep in your life. If you're having trouble getting sleep, go ahead and talk to your doctor about it. Sleep is super important. Sleep is how my brain is healing from what happened to it. Sleep is how your brain recovers from the stress of whatever is happening in your day. And let me tell you, people go through stuff. Everybody, everybody, what's so wild is how often you'll be in a group and somebody will say something and they will feel so isolated and alone and then everyone will relate to it. You may feel alone, you may feel isolated, but believe it or not, other people are going through what you're going through. So it's important to get that sleep and talk to your doctor. The other part of being well is of course diet you know taking care of yourself eating regularly drinking lots of water taking your medication talk to your doctor if you're just not feeling right you can actually get to your therapist through a doctor so it's important to talk to your doctor and if you feel like you're having mental health challenges this your brain is part of your whole body it's an organ and it can have moments and it needs sometimes help and healing So it's okay to talk to somebody. And by the way, at any age, that was another hang up I had. I was like, oh, I'm this age. And how can I be this age and be struggling this much? Right? There's no age cap on needing help. (laughs) I don't know why I thought that. I, I would hear such wise things like there's not a limit of a number of times it takes to find a recovery. It's not a limit. If you've tried to go for recovery before and you need to go again, but you're not going because you're like, well, I've already been twice and it's not going to take. There's no limit. Just just go because you're worth it. You're just absolutely worth it. I'm telling you, you are worth it. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk to you about is radical self-compassion. <sighs> it is really hard to do. But you have to be loving to yourself. I know at my sickest, I was not being loving to myself. And I know when I'm healthy, I am. And it's important to remember that you've got to just be kind, right? Like whatever you're struggling with, whatever you've gotten going on in your life, right? Maybe you're isolated and alone. So many people feel such shame for just being alone, right? And so like turn that around and be like, you know, kind to yourself. Something somebody said that really stuck with me was that every time you walk through a door or you sit in a chair or you pick up a cup, that was made for you. You're not alone in the world. The whole world was made for you. Little thoughts like that can sometimes help us get through. But again, if you're feeling too isolated for that, call and get help. Isolation can create serious mental health problems. And you may need help. And by the way, those systems, all those extra perks and systems, there's one of them that helps people get social. It actually helps them find jobs or purpose or community. So just you can't underestimate how much is actually out there if you think to ask or somebody can help you know to ask so that's very important and the last thing in our pillars of wellness that i want to talk about is the support system now i have a tremendous one i have my husband and my kids and i have friends and my like the people that i work with are like my dear friends and 
they absolutely, if I had let them know what was going on, would not have let me be not taking care of myself. And you guys would have really wanted me to take care of myself. And you guys are a support system. A support system is huge, but maybe you don't have one. So what I want to say is I have the best one in the universe. My community is the best support system I've ever seen anywhere. Could not be kinder and more loving and more uplifting. The words that you all left after my husband made his video to let you guys know what was going on just touched my heart so deeply. And um, when when we leave this video, I'm going to leave you with some of those words that were left behind. I want you guys to see the kind of people that we have here. So here's what I want you to do. If you're having a hard time, I want you to call your doctor and start reaching out and taking those steps to take care of yourself because you deserve to be okay. And then also just come by live stream when we have it. Or I'm going to, you know, when I start going live again, just come by live stream. You don't have to paint. I'm not worried about it. Because if you see three or four paintings, I'm going to get you painting. I know I can get you painting. <laughs> as soon as I get me painting again, I know I can get you painting again. So just come and just don't be alone. And, you know, reach out and know that you deserve light and love in your life. I want to say it again and say it with me. You deserve light and love in your life. You deserve to be healthy and you deserve to feel okay and, and settled and, and safe in your world. These are all things that you deserve. You deserve your sobriety. You deserve your safety. You deserve your mental wellness. So on that note, John and I would like to tell you guys that we love you dearly. Videos will be coming. Please stay subscribed. Please hang in with us. We will be back to our usual uh, live art shenanigans before you know it. And until then, enjoy the fun videos that I'm going to be sharing with you. Take care of each other. Feel free to leave any stories that you want to in the comments, but remember, comments are public, so don't put anything out there that you don't want public, okay? So that's that's just my little Sherpa urge to remind you guys to, you know, be careful with your privacy. Don't leave numbers or emails. If you want to write me, you can write me at support at theartsherpa.com too. Now, John, before we go, the last thing I wanted to ask you is, and, and I just want to do this for you guys because maybe you're worried about like how will the people in your life feel about you calling or feel about you going. John, when I went, how did you feel about me calling and getting the help I needed? Really good. Really good. It was really helpful for everyone immediately. You know, we all felt better. We all immediately knew it was the right decision and it just got us on the path to wellness. Yeah. So that's a path you deserve to be on, that path to wellness. Now, I'm going to leave you with some of the love that I got because it's amazing and I want to share it with you. As I always say, be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I will see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Hello, my friends. The time of day is here. When everybody paints and forget their fear. It's a lot of fun.